Sven and Kristoff are the closest of friends who have survived the bitterest of winters, their wacky adoptive family, and even endured the magic of a royal family. But how did this relationship begin? Today we're going to be unearthing the truly horrific and scary story of how Kristoff and Sven met. Hello, I'm Isaac from Watso Videos, where we discuss fun topics for fun people. On my channel, I focus on spreading magic by examining Disney films, so if you are new here, consider subscribing. Man, it's gotten cold outside, and it probably doesn't help in here that we are talking about a movie that's literally called Frozen. Hmm, what's this? We'll probably talk about this later. First, we have to travel many years to the past, long before Kristoff was around ice queens, trolls, and an intelligent reindeer. You see, we officially learned from the Frozen directors Chris Buck and Jennifer Lee that before all of those events occurred, Kristoff became an orphan, indicating that either his parents had died or abandoned him early into his life. Without anyone to watch over him, Kristoff was then placed into an orphanage where he was constantly looking to get into trouble, do his own thing, and go on adventures. Even though he had suffered a tragedy at such a young age, he was constantly just searching for fun, especially since he was kind of a wild child. Nothing could keep him tied down, which often meant he was sneaking out, exploring the woods, and following the ice teams while he was growing up. Those ice harvesters may have been in cold conditions, but they were definitely not cold to Kristoff. They instead amazed Kristoff and were in fact welcoming of the boy who enjoyed their company. According to the book Olaf and Sven on Thin Ice, we even find out when Kristoff fell into the frozen lake trying to go get ice when he was younger, they saved him and brightened his spirits by giving him the nickname Icicle. While it may have seemed like he was having a great time from the support of men who watched over him and the adventures he was having out in the woods, Kristoff's memory of the other people he was often around was not too positive. We are aware that he would one day sell his ice to the people of Arendelle, so he could have been reflecting on those situations, but honestly, I think he's looking back on his time as an orphan when he sings to Sven as an adult. Kristoff literally says all people do is beat you, hurt you, and cheat you, and then everyone is bad. This strongly suggests that he has dealt with some truly malicious and cruel people who have taken advantage of him and hurt him in the past. He was just a poor kid looking to harvest some ice, but likely from the people who watched over him at the orphanage and the other kids who lived there, all he found was abuse. In my opinion, I think that disdain for the people he met and knew along with his affinity for the ice harvesters makes it feel pretty clear to me that Kristoff likely ran away from his orphanage so frequently because of the horrible people he encountered. Kristoff was doing his best to find happiness and fun in his own life, but it also sounded like he was becoming closed off and distant from the world. Without a friend, he might have become a destructive force to himself and others as he became even more resentful of people. But luckily, before he got to that point, he met Sven in a very terrifying and frightening way. You see, according to Frozen the Essential Guide, while Kristoff was exploring the woods, he stumbled upon Sven who was dying. We don't know if Sven was attacked by wolves or had been left behind by hunters, but what we do know is that Kristoff, as only an eight-year-old, given that Sven looked to be around a baby at the start of the events of Frozen, quickly was able to determine that the harmed reindeer was an orphan like him and decided that he would save the calf. Knowing that he was the only one who could keep the lonely reindeer from dying, Kristoff somehow used his resourcefulness to keep the dying animal alive. With his diligence and desire to rescue the reindeer, Kristoff was able to save the orphaned woodland creature that he called Sven. The rugged and tough Kristoff had managed to look past the sad scene before him and possibly Sven's deceased parents as well, to do what he felt was right to heal the reindeer and he definitely made a good decision saving that little calf. From that moment on, Kristoff and Sven became best friends and rarely ever left each other's sides. With the heart of a Labrador, Sven became Kristoff's loyal companion, sleigh polar, and even his conscience. Even though Kristoff was definitely one of the stinkiest humans around, they had a great time with each other, and Sven truly brought out the best in Kristoff. 
Through the way they learned to understand each other, Sven kept Kristoff a responsible, compassionate, and empathetic person with his childlike outlook and ability to become serious when he believed a situation should be handled in a specific way. This reindeer could be a no-nonsense type of animal when it meant he was preserving the good nature of his friend, which truly brought Kristoff down a more constructive and positive path compared to where he was going. Kristoff wasn't going to become a thief, a villain, or someone who freezes an entire kingdom because of the hardships he faced from the people around him and the deaths of his parents. No, Sven made sure that wouldn't happen, and this idea is explored in a deleted song from Frozen, the Broadway musical, and the song When Everything Falls Apart. When a reindeer herder finds a reindeer left behind to die, the herder saves the reindeer's life and the deer him a better guy. This boy and this reindeer saved one another from the terrible situations they were in. While Sven was dying alone in the woods, Kristoff healed his wounds, and while Kristoff became an isolated, reckless loner who got into shenanigans, Sven made sure that he remained the good person that he knew his friend truly was. Kristoff and Sven may have met in a perilous, terrifying, and life-altering situation, but what came from that first meeting was a life full of fun, a few carrots here and there, and the knowledge that they would never be alone without someone to help them again. Brr, talking about Frozen while it's literally below freezing out makes me chilly. Oh yes, I can't forget, I have just relaunched WatsoStore.com with all new designs on absolutely premium products. The sweatshirts are incredibly soft especially, and I love how much comfier the premium tees are over the rest of my shirts I own. And trust me, I own a lot of graphic tees. There are three designs, the new Watso Videos design, the following dreams design after the name of my podcast and is an idea that I fully believe in, and the Frozen themed It's Time to Let It Go design. With Frozen 2 coming this month, you better believe it's time to get hyped and start playing Let It Go again. And that would be perfect to do underneath the It's Time to Let It Go fleece blanket. But you only have a limited time to get these Frozen themed items. Those will only be available this November, and then they'll be gone and off of WatsoStore.com for good. But to celebrate the exciting return of the Watso store and to give a big thank you to all of you who would like to get some merchandise right away, be sure to use code SPEN at checkout during the next week to get 13% off everything that you get from me. I chose 13% because Kristoff and Sven were with the trolls for 13 years until they met Anna and Elsa. So if you enjoy these designs and the videos I create and would love to see Watso videos grow to as large as it can be, make sure you go buy these designs at Watso's store.com. Again, that's 13% off your order with code SPEN at W-O-T-S-O store.com. And after you do that, let me know what you got by taking me in any post with you wearing the merchandise at Watso Videos on Instagram. I hope you enjoy the new merchandise. Thanks for watching and have a magical day.